Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Money Multiplier Podcast. I'm your host, Hannah Kessler, and thanks for joining me again. Thanks for tuning in on a weekly basis. Um, Today, we're going to talk about how do you get one of these policies set up, you know? So we're always talking about the benefits and the use of this infinite banking concept, but how do I go through, how do I get one of these policies, Hannah, you know? And um, I'm actually a little embarrassed to admit some of the times when I'm on the road and I'm teaching this stuff, um, after, and we do all like the Q&A and I get done uh, presenting and talking about, you know, fractional reserve lending versus privatized banking, I get some people who raise their hands in the audience and they say, Hannah, this stuff is so cool. How do I get one of these policies? Who should I call to get one of these policies? And in the back of my head, I'm thinking, well, me, hi, this is how I keep my lights on and feed my kitty cat and put gasoline in the van to go travel in. <laughs> so, uh, so anyways, we'll dive into kind of what are the steps after you hear this message, what are the steps to go and obtain one of these policies? So uh, before we hop in, I have a few announcements. 23 and 2023 is live right now. So go to our website, themoneymultiplier.com. You'll see up at the top our events. Click on that and you can see all the cities that we're going to this year. Now these events are free. And here's something I gotta tell the public. Event registration will open up 30 days before the event. So you cannot register before the 30 days before the the show date. Um, So go to our website, sign up for the emails, and you will be the first to know when that registration has opened for that specific location. And, um, or if not, you know, go follow us on the uh, YouTubes, the um, Instagrams, the Facebooks and all that stuff. And you can also follow us on there to see exactly how to register and when the registration is open. So themoneymultiplier.com. Um, anyways, I'm a little flustered. All right. So here for all my folks watching me right now, look back here. Oh my God, like literally my floor is torn up again. This new floor that I literally just renovated. Um, And honestly, it's because I guess my refrigerator is leaking. So like my refrigerator is like right behind this wall. And um, I guess it was leaking. And so it was coming underneath like the floorboards and like the baseboards. And um, so anyways, I had to have Nate, my contractor, come back over and he had to kind of see what the situation was and how we're going to fix it. So anyways, just as I thought I had my studio all set up, um, some hurdles have come, but can't enjoy life without, you can't enjoy the highs without the lows, so that's okay. But uh, anyways, let's kind of get into it. So first steps first, y'all gotta see the information, right? So you have to see us live maybe somewhere, maybe you saw the presentation on a recorded webinar, maybe on a podcast episode. Um, So y'all just gotta see the information. You gotta see that hour and a half presentation. It can be found on our website. You can um, go out there on the YouTube, search it up, but uh, you got to see that main presentation first. So if you go to the money multiplier.com forward slash presentation. It will take you right there and you can find um, how to watch the full 90 minute information. Now, I just tell you, and actually this is one of my dad's very, very strict rules. You have to watch it first. I will not hop on the phone with somebody if they have not seen the information first. And actually, this is kind of something what my grandpa said. He goes, Hannah, you know, this information, it's not hard, but it's kind of like watching a movie. You know, you got to see the start of it to understand the middle and the end of it. All right. So that's why you got to just see the information first, because you got to understand the foundation knowledge of what is the infinite banking concept? How are we practicing it? What is this whole world all about, okay? So go watch that first. I'll put a link down below as well in the the description, but it's literally just themoneymultiplier.com forward slash presentation, and you can watch the recorded thing um, or catch us live somewhere. Oh, hey, I'll even put this out there, y'all. If you have a group of people, maybe you uh, meet on a weekly basis with all of your veteran buddies or maybe your real estate um, investor group or association around 
around the country, you know? Whether it's live or in person or on a virtual webinar, I will come out. I will come out and speak to your audience. I will come out, even sponsor your events. You know, I'll pay for the roo- the food in the room, okay? So actually, I was just in uh, Denver, Colorado last week teaching to a group of Keller Williams agents, you know? Um, every Tuesday, they have a class. They get together. I was one of their speakers this past Tuesday, and I just paid the bill for the uh, food that was there at the event. So everybody got a nice meal, and I just talked to them about privatized banking. So I'll throw that out there if uh, any of y'all want us to come out and just educate to your audience on this powerful, in my honest opinion, powerful, powerful uh, financial uh, concept. So, okay, that's step number one. You got to see the information first. Step number two is is that we will set up a strategy call, all right? If it's not with myself or with Brent, Chris Noggle, Stephen Nagy, Sandra Fry, Olivia on my team, Dustin Davis, you know, all, any of us. And, and really, what's really, really fun about this whole thing and, and the Money Multiplier family over here is, is that all of these people have joined the team very organically. You know, everybody who is a mentor on the team now, they are or are and still and were, I guess, on the forefront, they were clients first, right? They were money multiplier members. They were consumers of this concept. We met them through somebody else who was a member or they saw us live somewhere and decided to take action with this information. And so now they are on board as the um, mentors on the team. Because here's number one, if you're going to be a mentor on my team, you have to, have to, have to practice what you preach. And and to be honest with you, I am not in the recruiting business, the the building an agency tor- type of business. My passion really lies in educating the public about this fractional reserve banking and how the Fed and the government just totally messed up this whole economy when they stopped putting our money towards the gold standard and we have these fiat paper monies now. All right, I'm sorry. I'm getting off onto a little fork in the road there. But, uh, but anyways... Step number two, like I said, it's about the strategy call now, okay? So with the strategy call, what will happen is is that you'll hop on the calendar, you'll text me, you'll email me, say, hey, Hannah, I saw the information, I want to chat, I have a few questions, right? So we'll set up a call, a one-on-one time, and it's just really this phone call is just for you. What questions do you have for me? You saw this concept. You saw the information. What do you have for me? What is going on in your life right now? Do you have bad debts? Are you actively investing? Or no, I'm just kind of sick of the taxes and the penalties and I want control over my money. I'm just looking for a vehicle to safely warehouse my capital someplace. You know, so what are your needs and goals? And that's what really happens on the strategy call is answering your questions. And then, hey, if this is something that you think you want to do, Now, our next steps is we just got to go and get approved for the policy. So the motions of going through and getting approved, very, very easy. All right. So this is step number three. So step number three, if you say, yep, this is something I want to do, we got to go through and get approved for the policy. So first thing is the application. An application is very, very easy. It's just a form we're filling out with all the yes and no health questions. All right, and this is a pretty generic thing from life insurance company to life insurance company. Okay, so it's really just getting approved on the health side. So the first thing on the application, they'll ask you all of those yes and no health questions. You know, who's your doctor? What's your income? Um, um, You know, what's your family health history like? yada, 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 right? Kind of painting a picture of who you are. The second step of what we got to do is the exam. So the exam is very easy. It's just um, the nurse will come out. They're going to perform a basic physical. You'll take a little blood. You'll pee in a cup, stand on a scale. And then all of that information gets submitted to your underwriter. So after the exam, that's really all your legwork. Now, Once the underwriter has the application and the exam, they will come back and hopefully they'll approve us, right? So now once we have the approval, that's when I like to come back to the table and talk again, 
All right. So before you go in and sign or accept any policy contracts, I'm going to come back and confirm that the premium that you told me on the onset, that is still what you want to do. Because here's the thing. The approval process can take anywhere from four to six weeks. So it's going to be about a month, month and a half or so until you are ready to start funding and, and, and using your policy itself. So I'm going to come back and confirm that our conversation on the forefront and maybe more as we go through the motions of underwriting, we may have some more conversations on your behalf. I mean, you just tell me if you need me. Okay. So I'm just here to be a resource and help answer any questions that you got. Okay. But, um, when we come back with the approval, I'll confirm that that is still the premium that you want to do. And then we'll also go through some other information, right? If you are kind of a numbers nerd, you want to see what's called the policy illustration. We're going to dive in deeper into all those nuances once we have the approval as well. Because I know too, that's when you'll have more and more questions because now you're going to really start using it and you're going to start thinking more and more practically of the use of your policy. So I will come back, we'll answer those questions. Now, just a little bit of tidbits, just real quick. Exams. My minors do not have to do exams, all right? So if you're under the age of 18, you absolutely don't have to do an exam. If you're kind of over 18, like between the ages of like 19 to like, I don't know, 40 or so, it's kind of a gray area. It just depends on how you answer the questions on the application and really kind of just the amount of insurance that we're applying for if the exam is required or necessary or not. Okay, so sometimes I get that question if like minors or kiddos have to do their exam. Um, and then also premiums, all right? So like I said, on the forefront of the strategy call, when we're having that call and we're talking through, hey, this is what's going on. This is how our game plan strategy of how to use the policy. You are going to determine what premium amount that you want to put into your policy. OK, I'm never going to tell you what premium that you should be doing. All right, because this is really about you taking complete ownership and control of your financial life. So you're going to tell me what premium deposit that you want to put into your policy. Now, this premium, it can be done on a monthly basis. You could do quarterly premiums. You could do twice a year. You could do annual premiums. All right. So you get to pick the dollar amount and the mode of what you want to deposit in on. Now, we talked about the premium. We talked about the steps to get approved for the policy, the application and the exam. We talked about some ex exclusions with the exam. Here's just real quick. Another question that comes up. Hannah, what if I can't get approved for a policy? You know, because at the end of the day, this is still a whole life insurance policy. What if I can't qualify on the health side of my policy? What if I have cancer? Or maybe what if I have a felony? What if, you know, I am disabled? I'm 100% disabled. I got severe PTSD. I've had maybe suicidal thoughts in my past time that's documented, right? There's some things that could disqualify you from getting approved for a life insurance policy. A whole life policy, it's a privilege to own one of these policies. It's not a right to own a policy, just like your driver's license, right? It's a privilege to drive a car. It's not a right to drive a car. So so don't think too deep into it. Okay, if you're just my average Joe type of people, Hannah, I got high blood pressure. Hannah, I got controlled diabetes. You know, stuff like that. Hannah, I'm just a little overweight, right? You're fine. You will get approved for your policy, my average Joe type of folks, okay? So if you do have some health concerns, we will talk about that. Just tell me what's going on, and then I can kind of give you my feedback. Because um, remember, I mean, that's where I started. Mom and pops, they needed help on the application side of things, helping people get approved, go through the motions. And so that's what I was doing. I was being the application specialist. I was that middle woman between you and your underwriter. So I know a lot about this underwriting stuff. So I'll share my knowledge. And if I don't know, I'll call the company, right? I mean, that's as easy as it is. They're all human up there. You just call them up and say, hey, I got Bobby Smith over here. Here's what's going on with Bobby Smith. Do you think he'll get approved right now? Would you consider him for coverage? What do you think? And then they'll come back and give um, me their uh, response or kind of that tentative yes or no. 
So, okay, so that's just FYI if you're thinking, hey, Hannah, I don't know if I can get approved on the health side. Real quick, let's talk about worst case scenario. You know, Hannah, I just got diagnosed with cancer yesterday. Yeah, you're not going to get approved for a policy, okay? So, um, in that instance, you can always put the policy on somebody else, right? You can put the policy on your spouse, a business partner, um, your children, grandchildren, okay? You just have to have a vested interest in that person and you can put a policy on them. You be the owner of that contract. They would be the insured body and then name whoever you want as the beneficiary, right? Here's an example. My dad is an owner of a contract, a life insurance contract on my body. I'm the insured person. And I imagine he named himself as the beneficiary, right? Because God forbid that I go out and get hit by a bus tomorrow. Dad's going to get paid out that windfall of the death benefit, okay? Real quick, just because I'm thinking about following my ADD for a second, okay? Here's another question I get. Well, okay, Hannah, if I put this policy then on my child, as history has it, I, the parent, am supposed to pass away before my children, so what happens to that policy when I were to pass away, right? Because that contract is still active. It's still in force. Even though I pass away, my child is still here because that life insurance contract is on the child. That's the insured body. So what happens in that instance? Okay. So in a perfect world, we teach the children about banking, right? The children will understand why they want to practice this infinite banking concept. Worst case, we didn't do a very good job. And that child, or maybe they just have other ideas, right? It's okay. It's okay to have different philosophies and ideas of what you think is, is right in your financial life. I just personally believe in Austrian economics with safe money, limited government intervention, and the liberty to do whatever I want. And that's why I enjoyed the infinite banking concept. But that's just me personally, right? You ha may have your own ideas, which is totally okay. We can agree to disagree. But let's make believe that child says, nope, I don't want to continue on with this policy. I, I don't want it, right? Well, what would happen is normally an appreciating asset is written within the will because a whole life policy is an appreciating asset. So it's normally written in the will of who they want to give this policy to. If it's not, then what would happen is the company will come to that insured person, the child, and say, hey, do you want to take over this policy? They say no. Well, okay. Then the contract would be done. It would, the cash value then would get paid out to that owner's estate. All right, so cash value would get paid out to the owner's estate. Contract would be done and everybody just walks away. So that's the worst thing that can ever happen in that scenario. So, okay, let's continue on. So we talked about, you know, got to see the information, got to see the presentation, strategy call, approval process. Now we're up to the point where we are approved for the policy. We talked about how I want to come back and do another strategy call. Once the strategy call, we're having another one. I told you that I want to come back and confirm the premium that you want to do. And then we're also going to dive deeper into the uh, policy illustration. Okay. Now let's make believe you say, yep, this is perfect. This is what I want to do. Now we got to issue the policy contract out to you. So the next steps is the home office will get the contract together and they will send it out. Now, insurance companies have gone paperless, okay? So this whole process is very electronic. The application is paperless, the exam, everything. So now the contract is going to come to you in a form of a DocuSign. You'll receive the policy. You'll review it. If you got any questions, you got my cell phone number. Call me up, text me. And then you fund it. You sign, accept the contract, and then now you fund the policy. Now... Give the insurance company about 48, 72 hours to get their ducks in a row, process everything. And now the policy goes active. Now, once the contract is active, now we can start using it. This is when the party begins, okay? I always say this too. My work really begins 
once your policy goes active. That's when my work begins because now we can start incorporating the process of you being your own banker. How are you gonna use this policy once it's in force and active, right? Isn't that why we're meeting? I'm not just here giving you a life insurance product. Yeah, the product itself is the vehicle that we're using, but how are we implementing and becoming our own bankers in our own lives to meet the needs and goals of where we're trying to go? So that's where the mapping and the implementation team come into play. The mapping and implementation team is just a part of us over here at the Money Multiplier. That's just what I call them, okay? They're my team that I just lean on for day in, day out servicing. All right, so just how you saw in the presentation, the Money Multiplier map, that will be created for you. If you got debts or large expenses that are coming up and you wanna see it mapped out visually of how we're using the cash and the policy to do so, they will create a money multiplier map so you can see it. If you wanna track your spreads on investments, you know, you're using your policy money to go out and invest in whatever avenue that you wanna go and invest in, because remember, you can use your policy money for literally anything. So they will even create maps of spreads and, and tracking the spreads on what investments that you got going on out there. Um, they'll also create you something called the cash flow analysis. And this is just honestly the policy illustration, just in a different format that's easier to read and easier on the eyes. It's not like the raw, hard illustration that comes from the insurance company itself. So just different things to help you really use and incorporate the process of you banking now within your life. Because remember, y'all, this stuff isn't hard. It's just a different way of thinking and it's different from what the masses and the leaders want us to do and want us to behave and think. So just these simple tools could really help you stay on that straight and narrow path of, okay, this is why I started this concept in the first place, right? Because I, I tell y'all, I know, I know, I know, because when you get back to your old normal way of, of doing life and living, you're gonna look back at your policy, I don't know, maybe a year, maybe three years from now, and you're gonna say, why did I get this policy again? What's going on in here, right? So to prevent that, that's why we have the mapping team. Even if you don't need me or need us, two to three times a year, you're gonna be getting a call, text, and an email from me or somebody on the team checking in. Hey, do you got questions? How's family life? How's business life? Do you need help with anything? You have any ideas or suggestions you wanna bounce off me? Nope. All right, that was a great 10 second phone call. I'll talk to you next quarter, right? Hang up the phone. So so love me or hate me, but we're gonna be lifelong friends, all right? I think you really just need somebody there to hold you accountable, hold you disciplined. And if you got questions, just easy to get a hold of, all right? So that's the mapping and the implementation team. This is a free service, okay? You are never gonna send me a check or a dime for anything over here. All you're committed to are those premiums that you wanna put inside of your policy contract. And I get paid, like I, how I mentioned before, I get paid directly from the insurance company, all right? So, so they determine how much I get paid and that is how I make my living over here, okay? So those are the high level steps. I hope I did an okay pro way of explaining this. I guess another little detail I wanna add on too is, is that reminder y'all, you know, this is you creating a system of policies. This is your banking system. One policy is never gonna suit all of your banking needs. And that's another reason of why the mapping team is there. So that, cause honestly, I'm telling you, once you really start to understand money, how it operates, how it flows, you will never ride the bicycle the previous way of what you've been riding it. That reference, um, that sorry, I almost said Nelson's book. That reference, Backwards Bicycle, it's on YouTube. Backwards Bicycle, that seven and a half minute video, that's a really good mental shift of how to get into the stuff. I recommend starting there too. All right, before I logged off, I just wanna say something else too. Y'all gotta get in the pool in order to learn how to swim. Okay, you can sit on the sidelines for as long as you want, but until you put on your floaties and you just step into the kiddie pool, this stuff is never going to click full circle. I can tell you, and I think I've said this before on the pod, but it really didn't click full circle to me 
until I got my first policy and I started my banking with that first policy. I started putting those premiums into it. Now, to be honest with you, I didn't really have a choice to start my first policy. Dad kind of forced me into it. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But um, but really, it, it, you gotta start somewhere, so start small, okay? The minimum to get started is 10 times the age. 10 times your age rule. Take your age, multiply it by 10. Just add a zero to the end. So you are 35 years old, $350 on a monthly premium. You are um, um, 70 years old, then I would start taking it maybe like 10 to 15 times the age, okay? So maybe like 900 or 1,000 a month should be that minimum for you. So um, let's talk. I mean, I hopefully this kind of gave you a little bit more insight about the process to get started, to get one of these policies set up. Um, and catch us around the country, all right? So we got a lot of events going on and it's always a pleasure to meet you face to face and feel the energy in the room. So as always, send me an email. Here's my free copy of um, a resource to you, uh, Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery, all right? Our, our ebook, if you send me an email, hannah at themoneymultiplier.com, hannah spelled the same ways forwards and backwards, I will send you a copy of our free ebook. Um, reach out to me, send me an email too if you want to set up a time to uh, chat. And um, as always, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for tuning in to the Money Multiplier podcast. And ask yourself, do my dollars make sense? That's what we're here doing all day long. How do I go, go put my money to work for me so that I no longer have to go out and work for it any longer? So give me a follow on the TikTok, the Instagram, the Facebook, the YouTube, the podcast, um, Hannah underscore Kessler, K-E-S-L-E-R. And as always, I'll catch you next week. Bye now.